Hello, and welcome to another Let's Play Me Game of Six of Sileo Tales of a New Dawn. Sorry, I was having a continuous brain fart right there. Before we start, if you're interested in playing this game, you can get it for free. Ah, Nichayo. But if you want to support the people that are making this game and I get the newest version earlier, you can go to Patreon, where it's $5 a month, or 54 a year. So, uh, last let's play, we had an episode which I was hoping which wouldn't be too too long, but it turned into like what, 50 minutes? Where we went to work, then went to the cabin in the woods, and then Axel was acting weird, and then Ty turned fellowo, and then this guy unleashed him on me, and we died. But it was all a dream, just like in Diego's route. Except Diego was put into a, like, Iron Maiden and then something came after us. But, uh, yeah, it do be like that. Sometimes? Anyways, reset my face. And start. Oh, dear. Uh, I lifted my head, desperately trying to grasp my surroundings. I was at, back in my office? But how? I... I looked around the room. Lucas and Eric were still battling with the printer. Both seemed frustrated. Which... Uh, yeah. Which honestly, I was kind of glad for. At least it was something... normal. Nearby, Dom had his head down, drawing frantically on graphics. On a graphics tablet. No doubt, still working on promo materials. I noticed he had headphones in. And then, I looked straight ahead, and, in shock, fell straight out of my chair. Oh, oh dear, are you okay, my friend? My legs were trembling, and my blood was frozen still. It was... him. Now, if we've seen this guy before, then I could understand you having a weird dream about him, but it's weird that you have a dream about him before you noticed him. Knowing no, what else to do, I climbed to my feet, sheepishly returned my, to my chair. It's... it's you. Me? Why, of course it's me. Whoever else could I be? Ah, but birdsong and rhyme aside. Is that supposed to be some kind of famous thing? Not sure. Are you sure you truly recognize me? I do not believe we have met. Uh... That being said, I have certainly heard much about you. I'm most pleased to make your acquaintance, Adrian. Uh, who? Who are you? Oh dear, it would seem I have gotten ahead of myself. I do that all the time. My name is Spencer, and I must say, I've been looking forward to meeting you ever since I first heard your name spoken. Are we going to get more information about this guy? I can't remember all of the thing from the last series, but like... He probably had a bunch of money and was putting it into the election or something like that. He kind of controls the town. I don't know. But I must say, I have been looking forward to meeting you ever since I first heard your name spoken. How? And by whom? This didn't make any sense. Well, regardless, it would seem I have finally stirred you from your slumber. Though I do apologize most profusely if my interference has caused you to come to harm. Um, no. I'm... I'm... okay. I'm most glad. Worry not, your employer had yet to notice your slumber. I was able to wake you in time. I was... so confused. Was it all a dream? I guess. It made sense, given how tired I was, and the fact that Ty played a big part, in a way. It uh, would have just been my subconscious shining a light on my fears. But then, I looked at Spencer, up and down, his warm, smiling face gazing down at me. It was a spitting image of the Spencer that had appeared in the dream, but that didn't make any sense. It's kind of funny how like they do 
bird smiles and stuff like that, which is fine. I mean, they have snake titties and furry stuff. The only thing I find weird is when they have birds do blowjobs and it's like... I don't even know how that would work. I mean, unless it had, they have a short beak that opens extremely wide and you're just gawking their throat. I don't know. I haven't thought about bird blowjobs a lot. So sue me. Had I stirred it in my slumber and consciously incorporated him in the dream? Was he really evil? Also praise? Lucas hardly seemed the type to praise anybody, let alone somebody who had only just started, uh, started with him. Something else I found weird was the fact that despite Spencer seemingly treating me with kindness, I still felt deeply uneasy around him. Uh, it might have been the dream, but there was still something incredibly off about him. Finding the whole situation incredibly bizarre and having no better plan on how to proceed, I decided to ask him a question. A question that hopefully helped me fill in some blanks. Um, excuse me, Spencer. I mean, sir, may I ask a question? My goodness, so very formal. Your parents must be quite must be quite something, having taught you such impeccable manners. By all means, go right ahead. Um, why did you tie up Ty and have him kill me? How long ago did you get here? Lucas's office, I mean. Oh, about ten minutes? Lucas is handling preparation for an event on my behalf. Spencer looked down at my desk, closely inspecting the flyers and letters I had been working on earlier. Ah, tremendous. I see you're familiar with the combats tournament then. It is something I'm hoping to organize, you see. Woodcrest needs as many lively events as it can get. And I can make sure to leverage my resources and connections in order to do my part. Anyway, that is neither here nor there. Having concluded my business with Lucas, I decided I'd pop over to see you. After all, I have heard so many wonderful things. Imagine my surprise in finding you asleep. So very difficult to wake you as well. You need to make sure you're getting enough sleep or else you'll get in trouble from dearest Lucas y over yonder. I'm sure you have borne witness to what happens to those on his bad side. Yeah, Eric. He brings it on himself, though. Th thanks for waking me. I mean, sorry, I think I drooled on one of your posters. No harm, no foul, my dear friend. Flyers can easily be replaced. Well, I must be on my way. So many things do, so little time to get them done. Life can be such a busy thing sometimes, no? It was most wonderful to meet you, Adrian. I am sure, with our mutual acquaintances, you and I will be running into one another with regularity. Oh, um, it was good to meet you too. S see ya. Fare thee well, my friend. I was so confused. He seems more friendly in this route than the other route. Though maybe he wasn't not friendly, he was just mysterious. He wasn't not friendly. Okay. As he struggled to regain something resembling my own Sandy, I noticed Dom watching Spencer as he left the building. The moment the door closed, he sharply ripped his headphones from his ears and stood up, dragging his chair adjacent to me and sitting on it backwards with a shocked expression. What the hell was that? What did you... For a moment, the thought crossed my mind that Dom had indeed shared my experience after all. Alas, and perhaps thankfully, that was not the case. I've never seen Spencer so friendly or chatty. He's barely a spoken toward to me at all. Last I check, he's off the grid and quiet with Luke and quiet with Lucas and Eric too. What the hell did you do? Oh, you heard that? Pause my music when I saw him walk up. Right. Well, um, he said something like he'd heard good things. 
Sound like Lucas must have recommend me or something. Lucas? Really? Man, I work so hard, and he's never done anything like that for me. That's... so weird. And I'm like him. Hey, um, that's the first time I've met Spencer. I mean, sort of. But anyway, what's his deal? That's just it. I don't know. He's been coming in here for about a year now. Always has big, elaborate projects for us. And yeah, he's so secretive. He rarely speaks to anyone, anybody, except Lucas. And even then, if you try asking Lucas, he'll tell you he knows nothing. Huh. Do you think Lucas is telling the truth? I don't know, dude. Lucas doesn't exactly stand out in the social skills department. And he's not the best liar. He gets real cagey when you ask him about it. I think he knows way more than he's letting on. He just won't talk about it. Or can't. Shit, that sounds... shady. He mentioned that he has resources and connections. And then, there's that suit he wears. That's not your ordinary outfit. I know. It doesn't make any sense. It's almost like he's some kind of dangerous criminal or something. Either way, I find the whole thing very shady. I mean, he said he's the guy behind the combat tournament. At the very least, he seems to be doing things that benefit Woodcrest. Maybe it's an above-the-board way to find enforcers and goons to do his dirty work? What? You think he's Mafia? I'd be the first. It'd be the first I heard of any Mafia in Woodcrest. I don't know. At the very least, if that's true, they're fantastic at remaining incognito. But he seems to have taken a like to you. That would be... that could be your end. Maybe you could find out what his deal is after all. Maybe. If he's dangerous, though, I don't know how... No, wait, how close I want to be getting. Of course, don't put yourself in harm's way. But if you find anything out, I'd love to know about it deal. Thanks. I... Oh shit, Lucas is looking this way. Dom quickly stood up and dragged his chair back to his desk before resuming his work. Lucas waltzed over, scowling in Dom's direction. Dom, distract Adrian in your own time. There's work that needs doing, and I'm already set back because of this damn printer. Dom meekly apologized before Lucas approached his desk instead. My desk instead. I sincerely hope he hadn't noticed me sleeping. How's your progress? Lucas looked down at my table before a violent scowl crossed his face. You've barely even started. How long has Dom been distracting you for? Sorry, that's... that's all on me. I uh, had a couple of rough days and almost no sleep last night. But that's not your problem. I'm sorry I brought my personal life to work. Lucas's features softened as he pulled up a chair. Unlike Dunn, he hadn't done moments ago sat opposite me. He leaned in close, whispering as to not be overheard. Just between us, I may have heard a few things from Ty. I don't know the full story, and no doubt very little compared to what you know, but I know things are difficult right now. It's weird that it's like, yeah, I'm being banged by your friend, and something's weird happening and it's kind of putting me off. I don't know. For what little it's worth, I'm sorry. I don't know the specifics, but I know enough to know you're getting the raw, something of a raw deal. Thank you, Lucas. You saying that so means a lot, and I'm sorry again. You don't have to pay me for this morning. Nonsense. I wouldn't dream of penalizing you for this. It's okay. You've not been working together, we've not been working together long, but I know you well enough to know this isn't normal for you. And no, and no do I know. I understand why, too. Man, it would be nice if, like, bosses were generally like this. You know? Understanding, etc. Actually, it may interest you to know. What well, reason I had I'd asked you to be here today was because Ty had asked me to. Huh? Yeah, 
Seems like he feels bad. Wanted me to keep an eye on you. Give you a distraction. Make sure you're okay. Despite everything, that's actually really sweet of him. What are you going to tell him? The truth. You're taking it hard. But doing an admirable job considering the circumstances. He would be proud of you for it. I'm... Um... I'm proud of you for it. <clears throat> As he said it, he almost to be, appeared to be in physical pain. Apparently, sharing his emotions was something to be diff he found difficult. Explained a lot, really. Like, at some point, we probably will do his route. I mean, I'm not... To, like, I'm not always dragged into everybody they do these routes. But it was like, I don't know. I'm like, yeah, I should do his route because he seems like a more complicated character. Well, do his route when it does because he seems to be getting the last, be putting in the last place when it comes to routes being done, you know? Because he's got no days. Explains a lot, really. Aw, Lucas, you big softy, you do care. What? No, I, it's just. Uh, it's all right, big guy. Your secret is safe with me. That is, if you answer a question for me. The setup couldn't be more perfect. I had Lucas where I wanted him. Oh, I'm um, sure. Shoot. I'd like to know more about Spencer. Suddenly, Lucas's face is filled with shock. Was it really such a strange question? After all, Spencer had only been here, just been here. How do you know about that? Ty said he hadn't... Wait, hold on. Ty? What did this have to do with Ty? How do you know about that? Uh, about what? He just got here ten minutes ago. Even paid me a brief visit. He's one of our clients, right? I just want to know more about him. Uh, oh, you mean... So, then, what's this about Ty? Oh, boy. It seemed like Lucas had made a significant miscalculation regarding my reasons for asking about Spencer, and had unwittingly revealed some kind of link between Spencer and Ty. The plot had thickened. Well, isn't this something I should know? I'm sorry, but I have already said too much. If they knew, I'd let this slip. Who's they? Spencer and Ty? It's not that I don't want to tell you. It's that I can't. Even if I could, it wouldn't be my place. Please, just drop it. I sighed. I didn't want to push the matter any further. I learned something which in itself was already a victory. I was just going to have to accept it was all I was getting from Lucas. Okay, I'll drop it. And please, don't tell anybody I said anything. Okay. Thank you. Anyway, I'd hope that having you having to work for me today would be good for you. But I don't think it's quite working out, considering your progress. I'll pay you in full. Finish this current stack and go home. Take some time to rest. Are you sure? I don't want to be a liability. Dead sure. Hell, it's an order. Finish your stack and get the hell out. I'll see you in a few helling days. Okay. Thanks, Lucas. And good luck, okay? You got a deal. You got down to raw hand. You deserve better. Thanks. Lucas smiled at me before heading back in the direction of the printer. It was nice to give him a night me to give me a pep talk. For someone so grumpy and reserved. Underneath it all, he was expectedly kind. As instructed, I began to work on the remainder of my pile. There wasn't much, and it wouldn't be long before I could head away. After a few minutes of work, however, voices from across the room captured my attention. It's working! It's... jammed. What? Yep, sorry boss. Lucas violently gripped the printer by the sides with a mighty heave, tipped the entire thing on the floor. The sound of glass in the flap flatbed shattering could be heard right throughout the office. Eric, we're going printer shopping. Roger that hot stuff.
I hope you have a spacesuit, because I'm going to kick your ass into low orbit. Ooh, sounds fun. Tell me more. With a furious grumble, Lucas departed the office en route to the nearest printer store. Shirley, unable to resist seeing if Lucas would hold true to his threat, Eric sadly followed close behind. I was so glad they were back to normal. Well, I was sure something. Anyway, there's one more thing I've been mean to ask. Yeah? I managed to talk Axel into exploring the abandoned building this afternoon, so I was wondering if... Nope! Huh? I mean, no, thank you. I, I just... I've got... plans. Oh, that's such a shame. Having you along would have been fun. Oh, well, next time I see you, I'm sure to let you know what we end up finding. Sure thing. Good luck. Don't die. I, uh... Sure? It, it's not like it's dangerous or anything. But yeah, we'll try not to. Promise. And why'd I have to go and say that? Stupid. Truth be told, I didn't have any plans. None whatsoever. In fact, I had no idea what I was going to do. But anything, even nothing, was preferable to taking my chances in Ben House. What about your friends? You're leaving them to die. I thought long and hard, ooh, ooh about what I'd do next. Then, it struck me. Diego's lunch break would be fairly soon, and I was only a stone's throw from the food court. This was a great chance to catch up with him. And perhaps I could even tell him about the weird nightmare? I sent Diego a text message asking if he'd like to meet me before cracking into a final part of my workload. Roughly ten minutes later, I was done. During this time, Diego had texted back and agreed to meet me up in a little while. Man, people texting me back quickly? Heck. I had little time to spare, if there was anything else that I needed doing. I waved goodbye to Dom and left Lucas's office, en route to whatever my next destination would be. -na -na -na. I guess we got time. Not sure if it's eight minutes time, but it shouldn't be long. In keeping with my earlier commitment, I arrived at the food court and scanned tables for a large brand Diego. It was a challenge considering how packed the place was, but finally, I located him sitting at the table to my far right, with two meals in front of him. Hey Diego, got an appetite today, huh? Hey, I may be fat, but I ain't that fat. This one's for you. Diego slid a buffet plate towards me. Predictably, it was piled very high. Hope you like it. The lady behind the counter gave me a hell for this. Because you overfilled both plates. What's the point of a buffet if you can't completely fill the plate? If she wants people to take less food, she'd make plates smaller instead. If you're not careful, she might just do that. I, I hope she doesn't. Anyway, thank you for the food. I really appreciate it. Least I could do, bud. You're going through a rough time right now, or tough. I mean, so are you. Hey, shut up. Let me do nice stuff. Anyway, I can't imagine you uh, met me here just to hang out, right? We see each other almost every day. What are you insinuating? Of course I want to hang out. Although, I do have some juicy gossip to share. Eh? Juicy gossip? What are you, a suburban housewife? Oh, shut up. <laughs> anyway, I hate to disappoint you, but there really isn't much to say. Tide definitely seems a bit, I don't know, down? But, aside, but that aside, it seems like business as usual. Huh, well that's uneventful. Yeah, sorry dude, wish I had something more for you. It's alright, I appreciate you keeping an eye out anyway. At least I can do, bud. Now tell me, what's your so-called juicy gossip then? Mr. Suburbia. Oh my god, shut up about that. <laughs> well, uh, I had this weird nightmare earlier. I don't know if it's relevant, but... Wait, hold up. When was this? You said nothing this morning. I, uh, fell asleep at Lucas's. Ooh, naughty. Man, Lucas gave you good walloping. Actually, no. We're getting ahead of ourselves. 
sorry, shoot. Long story short, about the dream, I figured it out. I'm still figuring it out. I feel like it was important somehow. Anyway, it sort of brought all my fears and worries to life. Ty was in it, and, well, he said some really awful things. Aww, but you know it's a, just a dream, right? It ain't real. Yeah, tell that to my ex-girlfriend. You say that, but hold on. The guy showed up in the dream said some really weird, kind of spooky stuff. He had Ty enchained. Dom was there too. He got too close. Ty ripped him apart. Yet this guy could get close to him and Ty did nothing. So I'm wondering if they're like in a relationship or were. Anyway, here's where it gets weird. The guy started saying some weird shit. Doesn't make a lot of sense. And then releases Ty to kill me. Okay. And then, I woke up, and guess who's standing right in front of me? Same dude. Whoa. And, like, I've never seen this guy before in my life. Anyway, dude is real nice to me. Real friendly. Dom then tells me he's not usually like that, and he must just have taken a liking to me. Wow, dude. And here's the weirdest bit. Although, I need to promise to keep this a secret, I'm not supposed to tell anybody, but I'm telling you. Of course, my dude. Hit me. Lucas then accidentally let it slip. The guy had some involvement in Ty. Whoa. Real weird. It's like a premonition or something. But hold on. Why was this guy in Lucas's office to begin with? He was a client. He, we were doing a job for him. I see. Damn, dude. That's weird. Any ideas about what that guy's deal is? No. Not yet. Lucas can't and won't tell me. Apparently, he knows something though. Dom doesn't know anything much. But he seems to think this guy is really suspicious. Like there's prob there's a possibility the guy is real bad news. And here's something about and there's something about the way he looks too. He's a jet black raven. Name is Spencer. Red eyes. Wears a really fancy old suit. Doesn't look old. Anyways, like what would an old be for a suit? Anyways, when I look at him, my brain screams at me to run. There's something not right about him. But like, he doesn't seem bad anyway. Hmm, why does? Oh, shit dude, I've seen this guy before. Wait, you have? Yeah, it was a regular in Ty's for a long time. Ty used to love when he came in. Pretty sure it's because the dude only drank the gourmet top self shit. It was always a good payday when he showed up. Hold on, was a regular? Yeah, dude, I haven't seen him in a while. Maybe just comes in. Maybe just comes into my off days or something. But I ain't seen him for oh, maybe a couple of months now. Do. Do you think that has anything to do with anything? Like, what if Ty is secretly hurting for cash, and this Spencer guy is coming around making things tight? Hmm. I don't know. I thought the bar was doing pretty well. Yeah, but Ty has a habit of controlling information. It could be he just haven't, hasn't allowed us to know about it. Maybe. I guess it's plausible. Or, or... Dom thinks he's bad news, right? What if he's like some gangster or something? What if he's extorting Ty? I mean, also plausible, but he think you're missing the point. Maybe he's trying to keep you out of harm's way. Maybe he's secretly a hero. You're getting way too excited about this. Besides, he doesn't know if this has anything to do with my relationship with Ty in the first place. Wait, we don't know. Sorry, I don't know. I guess I just know mystery when I smell one. There's probably not much point in forming conspiracies until we find out more. Right now, we don't have much to go on. Alright dude, fair enough. Keep an ear out, okay? Let you know if I find anything else. Thanks Diego. Diego pulled his phone from his pocket, only to get... To get a fright? 
Shit. If I don't leave now, I'll be late. I need to get a carry container. All right, Diego. Thanks for lunch. I'll see you later on. S later, dude. Diego departed. Had filled plate in hand. His first goal being to transfer his uneaten meal to a carry container. If looks could kill, <laughs> the look the lady gave him as he approached would be a first degree murder. Having no plans myself, I took some time eating, savoring each mouthful as I went. A short while later, after having finished my meal, my phone started to ring. I wondered who could it be. Yellow? Hey, hey, fam. What's good? What? What? Has anyone ever said hello to you before? I mean, yeah, but... Not the point. Anyway, I just got done with Lucas. Ooh, ooh. Boy, he may be handsome, but he sure is thick. Are you perving again? Oh, no. Plenty of time for that later, if you know what I mean. I don't. Anyway, he goes out and buys the same model of printer he smashed. Like, come on. What's wrong with him? The only difference is the color. Anyway, forget that. The reason I'm calling is because I just realized you still haven't filled me out on your romantic rendezvous with our tiger. So I was thinking, how about you and me go somewhere fun and you can tell me all about the hunt details while we're there? Um, well, you see, um, heck are you tongue, eh? Bet he's got more than just that. Am I right? <laughs> Well, no, actually. We, uh... Yeah? Things aren't going... Well. So great. We kinda... Spending some time apart. Oh. Sorry, man. I had no idea. It's fine. You couldn't have known. Okay. How about this? I'll check that offer and present you with a new one. Let's go somewhere fun. Have a few drinks. And just have a good time. Don't be taking your mind off it all. Just you and me, buddy. What do you say? I, uh... Truth be told, I didn't really want to. Especially knowing what Eric idea was fun is probably like... You'd probably end up at a strip club or something. Which really is the last thing I need right now. Oh, come on. I just am trying to help you take it... Take your mind off it all. Make you feel better. Let your boy Eric soothe that broken heart. And then again... I was always generally trying to help. Just in a distinct Eric, distinctively Eric way. I'd fi feel bad turning him down. Come on, you'd love it, I promise. I sighed, knowing I'd probably come to regret my choice. Okay, fine. Yes, I knew you'd come to your senses. Where are we going then? That's a surprise. It's on 3rd Street, across from the vintage music shop. Know the one? I'm sure I'll find it. Great. Oh man, we're gonna have so much fun. See you soon, Adrian. God damn it. With a deep sigh, I got up and left the food court, heading in the direction of 3rd Street. I hadn't taken long to arrive at our agreed meeting spot. On foot, Eric had arrived only minutes after I did, proceeding to suddenly drag me down a suspicious alleyway. What alleyway? We're gonna have to find out later, cause we're over time. So, and if this let's place a comment, cause I like comments, tell me what you like, dislike, tips, or otherwise. If you like my YouTube and links you grow, then please like, subscribe, and check out the videos to help it grow. Leave a remainder of your animals to help control the pit population. And if you want to play this game, it's available for free on itch.io. But if you want to support people that are making this game and are getting the newest version earlier, then you can go to their Patreon, where it's $5 a month or $50. The fifty-four dollars a year, and until next time, uh, no, let's play. I mean, Emma, Wolf Six of Side Leo Tales of New Dawn. So thanks and see ya.